an industry, they well documented and they're open source. So that's not the only one. Yeah. Yes, that's a very good answer. It's really about the data set size. It's, it, you know, the web-based applications all run into problems when you scale up the data. And we're talking about several million data records here. So, it, it, all, you know, it's not difficult to imagine. All web browsers have an alloc a fixed allocation in terms of the memory they're allowed to occupy. So there's a, there's a hard limit that all web browsers are, are confined to. So it's, it's, pretty, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty clear. Other questions? <clears throat> good that we get lots of questions today. You have, you're having lots of good practice, Dylan. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. I did have a few more. What is new about scatter plots? So you have this chapter on scatter plots. It's been refereed, and I can see that. But what's new about scatter plots? Um, well, it's not new. I think that's the very good reason why I use it. It's very intuitive. Everybody knows about them. Um, so it, it provides a good a jumping off point for visualizing data. Um, some of the techniques I use, though, I think. Um, so you can use GPU to actually filter the data itself. Um, the exploration, so individual axes, you can zoom in, so it's make interactive. It just provided a, um, a good intuitive um, canvas to actually show the data itself. Um, there's some techniques to use around it, like a bit bigger, um, in terms of filtering and the metadata of it itself. Um, and there's the scatter plot matrix, which I kind of touched on briefly as well. I think, um, that's kind of new where in scatter plots in some ways, I guess, but otherwise it's a, it's a well established uh, process and some of the reason why we chose it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that's fine. I, I, would, I would phrase it slightly differently and say that the scatter plot by itself is not new. Our contribution is the application of scatter plots to very large data sets. So the question is, how can you adapt scatter plots to handle very large data sets? And we did that in a novel way by exploiting the GPU, right, to make them very fast. Uh, a standard scatter plot will not be able to render, you know, several million points at interactive frame rates. And we have a set of filtering and selection techniques that is interactive and supports very large data sets. So it's more in the scalability aspect that our contribution lies and in, in the, maybe the filtering options rather than, say, the scatter plot design itself. Yeah. yeah. A lot of these questions are answered in the thesis, but the, still the examiners want to hear it from you. you know. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's the whole point really to make sure that I actually wrote the thesis. Yes, it? exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. How do you know it was a top downloaded survey, your, your SOB? Um, because you I, mentioned it. I received an email from um, uh, the publisher to say that it was in their top 10% of downloaded papers. Okay, good, good. I have a certificate as well. Okay, very good. Yep, yep. Um, okay, that's, good. That's how it is on the, on the great grind. <laughs> yep, that's fine. You, you are allowed to say Bob was attending a Eurographics Executive Committee meeting where they reported this news as well. However, mm -hmm. it's not it's not published. The news itself, it's not published. You, mm -hmm. you, are, you are allowed to say that. Okay. We might get into trouble though. No, it's not it's not a problem. Like it, it, there's no but nobody's gonna get into trouble. 
so how about the uh, the core diagram scalable? Uh, the aim was to uh, improve the scalability of core diagrams, um, which it has to some aspects, but there is a limit on to how many that can be shown. This is discussed in the um, in the thesis, and uh, yeah. So, to some aspects, yes, it improves the scalability by a factor which I can't quite remember what it was. Um, a significant factor, however, it's not infinitely scalable. Um, and it's an easy to get a limitation at some point. Mm -hmm. Again. Mm -hmm. I could imagine that question coming up. Mm -hmm. Like, are the, is are your and you're correct. Uh, it might it might be useful to have a copy of your thesis uh, like accessible for, yeah. you know, if you have to pick out a number that says you know uh, they're I scared. Do have it here. I, I can find it Actually, I don't think that is in my thesis. I think I made it for a the revisions. Um, paper revision, but yes. never well, after my um, paper after my thesis submission. Good. Good that we noticed that now. So that's um, a that's a little a little like let's say imperfection. Yeah. Yes, this was in the revision cycle that we were working on this question. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so you can have a copy of your revision somewhere accessible as well. And yeah. you can talk, you're allowed to talk about your revision. So, an answer of game would be to put all revisions essentially into the thesis before its final publication. That's right. Okay. So um, uh, that question's more interesting than I thought. And you can say something like, actually, we, we have revised that part, and if you want, I'm happy to share the revision with you. It's under, refer it's under review. Yeah. Like, that would be a good way to answer that and, and have the revision somewhere accessible. Yeah. Because that question yeah. could definitely c come up. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Running out of I'm running out of energy. So just a few little comments on the slides. Mm -hmm. You, you're um, switching a little bit back and forth between British and American English on your slides. Oh, am oh, Yeah, okay. yeah. You yeah. have like visualization with an S sometimes and with a Z sometimes. So you want to check for consistency on that. Okay. You might want to consider a motivation slide. So you have kind of title, then contributions, maybe. I think you have title, contributions, then data. But I think I have objectives and challenges, yeah. You might want to have a slide that's called motivation. Okay. That says, why is your thesis interesting before you jump into the data? Okay. Like, you have this company, QPC, they're collecting lots of data. They realize they can't they struggle to derive insight and knowledge from it, you know, set the, the scene. Yeah. You could add a, you could add slide numbers, so it makes it easier for the examiners to refer to slides. Okay. Yeah. You could add an image to the SOB slide that shows the number of books, figure one, which is the number of books being published over time. It's, yeah. a, it's a pretty clear, like, 
oh, check this out, like, the number of books on this topic is exploding as we, as we progress. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you could add an image to the scatter plots slide one, by the way, it's just all text. Mm. Yeah. There's a couple of them, like Instagram images. Really. Mm. By the way, you are certainly allowed to create slides for any questions that you anticipate. That's fine mm -hmm. too. In your summary slide, you could mention your collaboration with QPC. Like th this is a constant thing in your thesis. In your, your summary slide, doesn't doesn't even mention it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like in my thesis, you don't have to do this. In my Viva, I had one slide for each chapter, just one. And then I showed mm -hmm. the demo videos. Mm -hmm. So slide, demo video, slide, demo video. Like you could do that style too. I was kind mm -hmm. of, you showed some videos, mm -hmm. but I, I, they didn't look like the demo videos to me. Uh, yeah, all the demo videos, they, they're quite long. So I think they probably go on too much. I think they're right um, mm -hmm. like eight minutes and five eight minutes and then so I think um, you, you can just yeah. you can just stop them though. You can just start the demo video, talk a little bit, and then stop and move on. But that's essentially what they, they were the demo videos essentially just the, the first half of them. Oh um, okay. Okay, I didn't mm -hmm. see that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, do, do you mention that the demo videos, you do mention that they're available for public viewing, like in the thesis. Mm -hmm. It could be worth mentioning in the Viva as well. I'm not sure about that. Not yeah, sure. I'll, I'll put a line in summary or something. I'm not, I, I, I don't necessarily have to mention it, just the lines there is. Mm -hmm. mm. And I'll, I'll just mention one more thing. I don't know if this is important or not, but I think Deepak asked you about your systematic review of books. Mm -hmm. Did you follow a methodology during your book summary process? Mm -hmm. And I would, I would think about two answers to that. One is we have a published methodology about how to summarize research papers, right? It's part of the PVSK. Yeah. So that's actually a peer-reviewed systematic summary process. So uh -huh. I would mention that first and say there is a peer-reviewed systematic summary process as part of the PVSK. <clears throat> and secondly, we adapted that process to books now. So instead of summarizing research papers, we summarize research books, uh, information visualization books, and we did do it in a very systematic way. Yeah. So what we did was we summarized, we went through every single chapter and we summarized every single chapter in one to two sentences. Mm -hmm. And that's reflected in the, in the summaries themselves. And we actually indented the paragraphs based on, uh, I can't remember the indentation, but the, the indentation, every chapter, I think it was. yeah, I think every other chapter, that's right. So you could actually count which chapter you're on in the summaries by looking at the indentation of the, of the yeah. text. So that's that's very systematic, I would say. You know, it's the same. Pro it's a systematic systematic process that's applied to all all the books. Mm -hmm. And I think you said this, but I, I'm not 100 percent sure. You can you also counted the number of pages dedicated to each topic, mm -hmm. and that's how you. Cr that's one of the pieces of data that appears on this the overview table. Yeah, so that yeah. number, that number is actually the number of pages 
dedicated to each topic inside that book. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Excellent. Any other Friends. questions or comments? I think you're going to be, uh, I think that was very, very helpful. I think that was very, very good preparation. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you, everybody, for the question. It will be quite valuable. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, your, your thesis is great. The, the, who knows? The, the examiners still want to, to test you as, as much as possible. There who, was, who are the examiners? They just know. Uh, Mark Jones and Kaizu. Yeah, so Ma Mark was. Mark has done somebody recently, maybe Richard, yeah. Liam. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kai also was examiner for Chow Chow. Tong. So yeah, it will it will be fine. And I am trying to record this and I'm gonna to try to upload it as well so you can look at it again. It's it's we'll see. I don't know like how good the recording came out and stuff like that. Hopefully it came out came out okay. Um. Is there any, you give like a, a quick brief background about Kai for me, and um, what I should expect from him? Uh, Kai, he's a, he, I like Kai a lot. Uh, he, I would call him a quote, visual analytics person. He likes visual analytics. This is his, this is his thing. So he might ask you a question like, is this visualization or visual analytics? He might ask you something like that. Uh, just, just to see how you react kind of thing. Okay. And he, I, I know he likes the storytelling theme, so that's one of the reasons why we asked him to, to oh, yeah. uh, examine Chow, because he likes the mm -hmm. storytelling. So the last PhD student he had was, his thesis was about sense making and visualization, which is very closely related to storytelling. And um, but yeah, he, he's, a, he's a really nice down to earth guy and he's just gonna, gonna test you on your, on your basic sanity and, and your logic and uh, but it's not going to be um, anything too dramatic. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, 